Dizzle Dizzle. We got an excellent show here today, but first I want to say the views and opinions of, Con of the arena does not reflect that. Those of Comcast, a staff, or studio employees. With that being said, viewer discretion is advised. Today, you know, last week we talked about immigration. We had Brother uh, Terrence on, um, talking about the pros and cons. So today we actually have somebody who this is directly affecting. So with that being said, we're going to get right to it. To my right, we have Sister Yatunde. How you doing? I'm well. How are you, Black Sun? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. That's good. It's good, good that you're here. And to her right, we got Brother Bear. What's going on with that? Hey, everything, man. How you doing, man? Introduce yourself, Bear. Hey, I'm Brother Bear from the Atlanta Decatur chapter at the Black Panther Party, Minister of Defense. Um, and we're working for the people, man. Okay, let people know that you one of the original crews, man. Original crew, I mean, yeah. one of the first starters here in Atlanta, right. man, really. Out there putting the boots on the ground, you know, trying to make it happen for our people, man, make okay. a difference out here. Okay, cool. And we got Brother Yay. What's going on, man? Look, I mean, this is my first time in this chair. Right. This is my first, can they see me on, on switch yeah, the camera? Can, so they can see me the first time again yeah, in this chair. Rock, oh, okay. rocking the mic. So I'm real excited, especially jumping on the little Malcolm. That's right, <laughs> but, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so it's, it's good, man. But now nah, it's always good to come back on a Sunday, man, and just start informing the people That's right. and doing our thing. So, you That's know, right. it's always a pleasure to be. All right, well, you know, we, um, as you know, Yang, we talked last week mm -hmm. and we, um, about, you know, immigration and the effect. And, you know, we think about Hispanics. Right, right. Yeah, we got this sister right here, man. You know, right, right. My sister. Which you is, know? and I think that's what made it, you know, even that more real that how, it never, it, it's always like a distant issue until it hits home. Right. You know what I'm saying? To lose, I think that when we start seeing as someone I've, I've known to be vibrant in the community, useful, beneficial, to bring a lot of joy and light, mm -hmm. when you see certain immigrations and it threatening that part of your community, it makes it that more real. Right. It's unfortunate that we don't have a lot of organizations and groups that really make us see it from this level. You know, I think that as a black nationalist, it would be in our best interest mm -hmm. to start looking at international laws and policies and to looking at things on more of an international view, not just local, but international, to really start expressing that, that form of revolutionary pan-Africanism. Right. Am I talking too fast? Oh, no, 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 no. no, and what you're saying, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, because, you know, <laughs> being that you and Bear are from the Black Panther Party, mm -hmm. which derives from Malcolm X. Malcolm X derives from UNIA. Mm -hmm. Marcus Garvey. Yes. He uh, was deported. Yes. yes. He was deported. How about so that? if you uh Yeah. So we you were black yeah. nationalists, this is definitely gonna be your issue. Mm -hmm. You gotta you gotta take it it's gotta be a personal mm -hmm. uh, battle, man. Because mm -hmm. I mean it, you know, one of our forefathers of nationalism. Mm -hmm. So we always see that this is a weapon that they use, you right, know. Right. So it goes into you know what I'm saying? What, what, and that's my question for the sister. I mean, what, mm -hmm. bring some enlightenment to it, bring some awareness to us. How, you know what I'm saying? Did this, the thing get started and really why it is important for us to get behind these calls and rally behind these things? Well, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, when you talk about being a foreigner in, 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 in this land, I think that's absolutely absurd to begin with. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's impossible to be a foreigner in any land when you're a citizen of the world. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's important because, you know, first we're talking about a mass of people being stolen and taken to a land that they did not consent to go to. Mm -hmm. And then when you have those from that same land where people were stolen from, willingly saying they want to come there's the issue mm -hmm. so that to me is like this bias double standard oh you can only come through if you're going to be working under me if you're going to be doing for me and if everything that, that you're going to stand for is is basically what i'm putting in play however if you're choosing to willingly come here and say i want to start a business i want to make a better life for my family back home it's like hold on say what what's mm. going on too productive. And, right. And okay. at the same time, all of the resources that are being used in this land are coming still from that land. Right. So it's just, it's, 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 it's a, a double-edged sword. I mean, because... It's, it, it's straight hypocrisy. Basically. <laughs> you have to call it what it is. Straight That's hypocrisy. Right. I'm going to adjust your mic just a little bit to okay. it. Okay. Yeah, against your earring. Okay. okay. Right there. That should be good. Okay. Right there. Okay. So it doesn't hit your... Okay. All right. Hit your shells. Okay. So, um... 
Okay, so I mean, I, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, man. I had another question. So, so mm -hmm. how large is it? And I don't want to dominate the conversation, but how large is this for now? I mean, how big is this going on? I'm, I'm sure, like I said, I was just really brought awareness to the serious of the issue when they was like, man, you know, you tell me they trying to, just, you know, just a lot of hoopla. And when I really saw the commotion that it caused in the community that I belong to, amongst the people that I deal with, I really saw how major the mm -hmm. issue was and how really ignorant. Mm -hmm. To it, like I said, I thought it was you know our Latino brothers and sisters. I mean, right, you know, right. you read the news, dang, that's messed up. How they treating us as a people, oppressed people worldwide. But it doesn't really hit home until it hits the community that you involve, the places you eat, the places you socialize, mm -hmm. and when they take a member of that community, it really hits home. Mm -hmm. So, how wide is this? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't even know. I mean, I wish I could give you numbers and give you statistics. However, I don't know. What I can tell you is that. You know, from, from what I would, from the people that I know, maybe one in every four or five African mm. that you know is going through immigration problems. Mm. Either they're, they're, they're still dealing with legal permanent residency mm. or they just don't have anything. Like I never had anything for the 16 years that I was here. No form of um, social security number, no ID just living off the grace of people around you. So I think it's very widespread and a lot of people don't talk about it because of, um, it, but for me personally, I'll say, certain people, when they found out that I was dealing with immigration problems, it became a tool for them. Mm. Oh, well, if you're on such and such, I'll call immigration on you. Wow. Or if you're on such and such, I'll go tell that you're here illegally. And this is in our community. This is, this is in our community. Among the people. Among, <laughs> 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 yeah. You would be surprised. You would be absolutely surprised. Um, I've, I've heard, of all, heard it all from, from uh, men demanding certain things mm. or even even abusive relationships that I had been in um, early on, you know, when I was younger, and just hearing the, the, the end result of it was, oh, well, if you don't such and such, mm -hmm. I can such and such. Mm -hmm. It sets fear in the hearts of most, so people don't talk about it, but you'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. It's very widespread. Well, my question is, what is, what is in America that's, I guess, in a uh, you born where's in Nigeria, right? Born in Nigeria, I'm world raised. World I've been raised, here for okay, 16 right. years, seven years in Indonesia. I did four. I was living in uh, Amsterdam for four years. So okay. I mean, some, some might mm -hmm. say, you know, I mean, there's no jobs here for black people. Mm -hmm. So why <laughs> come here? And you know, I mean, what is? I mean, what what is the? I guess. Uh, light at the end of the road in America. Basically, it's not in Nigeria or any other. It, it is there. Okay. However, with the thing, we all know about media propaganda, you know, it's mm -hmm. like they push it to the rest of the world like America's the end all be all. Right, the right. land of milk and yeah. honey. You come here and bam, 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 everything is just popping off. It's happening for you. Mm -hmm. You rich, you Beyonce, you Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. And then you get here, you so realize that it's hard. <laughs> Said, right, yeah. basically, and you get here and you realize, oh man, I have to go to work so I can afford a place to stay so that I can wake up and go to work the next day right. so that I can have a right. place to stay so I can go to work. Right. You know, when you right. get here, that's when you realize that. Um, however, America, I will say, can give you the best of the best mm -hmm. and it can give you the worst of the worst. Right. Mm -hmm. It's all in what you choose to do with it. Where do you, what do you want to see? So usually people that are coming from out of the country are coming here with the mindset of starting a business not looking for work, they want to start a business. Okay. So there's, there's a difference there. So there, it, there are businesses out there. There are thousands of, of, of uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sponsorships for people that want to start businesses out Why there. Why start a business in Nigeria? Or because the, the so-called, the money here mm -hmm. is, is, is better. It's easier to make the money here and send it back home than it is to make the money home and, and, and try to use it mm -hmm. at home. So it's just and bigger, it's just bigger. The so technology, everything. So the whole thing is really, I mean, now this is one of the things that I will say. At What is the uh, long-term goals? I mean, like, okay, our brothers and sisters come over, so is the long-term goal to send money back home to rebuild home? Or is it to carve out a place to bring more relatives over and to incorporate in the, you know, in the, in the capitalist system and participate in the exchange and, and, and the whole thing? And then secondly, the second question to that, I would like, what is the view of the African that is here in America, what they call the African American, the black man, the woman, whatever, 
label? That's a big question. Save that again. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to take it at first and that second one. I'll okay. try to take it at first and that second one if I remember it correctly, right? However, first of all, I'll say that that is not a long-term goal to send money home. That's an immediate goal. Mm. That's something that's done ex as soon as you reach here. It's expected of you. You're in the land of milk and honey, remember? Yes. Right. So that thought is like, oh, he landed? Man, he's... Like family ties is... It's, it's deep. It's That's the deep. biggest thing about Africa is family. Like, it's togetherness. So, as soon as you're here, you're expected to, to start working. You're working on your business, whatever, and you're sending money back home. Mm -hmm. Even if you're here struggling, they don't know that back home. You here, you living under a bridge because you working and can't pay the rent because your rent is being sent back home. They don't know that back home. Mm -hmm. You send them money. They think you rich. Mm -hmm. So, in their mind... They're like, oh, he's doing wonderful over there. I need to get there, too. So then they're begging him, like, get me there, get me there. And he's trying, he won't, he can't explain it to them. It's not what you think. Like, I'm struggling out here trying to send y'all this $100, $200 a month. And they're not seeing that, so their desire is to come here. So the end result would be to get more family members here. There are some of us, and I say us because my eyes have been open to it. There are some of us whose end result is to or at least for me, was to make that money and just take all of it home mm -hmm. and rebuild my continent. Mm -hmm. However, being that I wasn't in that position to make the money, I have made the people. <laughs> so yeah. I've met the people that I can bring back home to help rebuild yeah. Africa. Okay. So the people are my money. That's okay, my right currency. So, the people, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, Thanks. So my question is like to, to people who are over here in, in this country or whatever you want to call it, dealing with the problems that you're dealing with, how do you help them embrace that? Wow. I think I'm still going through culture shock. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still, you know, it, it's, it's, everybody has their tolerance level is what I can say. And I would never pray to be in anybody else's shoes than the shoes that I've walked because I would have broken mm -hmm. 10 times over. Um, and I pray nobody else wants to be in my shoes because they would break 50 times over, you know. So, I mean, all I can say is just be you, be true, and just, you know, the, the core happiness is what allows anybody to deal with whatever true. life throws at you. True. So, for anybody going through anything, core happiness, just be content with self and, you know, okay. everything else just... Well, you know, and, and cause, you know, Barry, he's a uh, Black Panther, like I said, the Black Nationals... Uh, ties are deep because you have somebody like Armadou Diallo mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who was uh, shot by the police and then you had the other Haitian brother who was sodomized, uh, sodomized by <coughs> so my yeah. question would be you know um, I guess yeah I mean you got people coming over here and there needs to be I mean, I mean, hell, as black males, we need protection. Mm -hmm. So we got the Black Panther Party, you know, down there, you know, and putting in their work. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm, what I'm asking is, uh, I guess the ties would be important. Mm -hmm. because the tie. I guess that goes into the question where I was asking, what is the perception? You know what I'm saying? Of us is here because a lot of times, let's get, you know, we don't keep mm -hmm. it blunt. It's the arena. Yeah. You know how we do yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, we keep it yeah. real. We yeah. don't talk real. So we talk some real stuff. So, you know, a lot of times we get the attitudes. That's right. Whether we're giving them or getting them. It's going, you know, going through the flea market, this and that. And a lot of times we do see um, them, you know, a lot of our African brothers and sisters come over and become, you know, economically uh, uh, stable. Yeah. You know, and it, and it breeds intimate. Mm -hmm. What is it into me? Dislike, basically. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. So it breeds that. I think when, when I started getting some African friends from the continent, you know, we all African, but from the continent, from the motherland, I started to see that really it was a, a game of divide because while we're sitting here, while I was breeding this contempt, and I was like, man, y'all got it easy. They give me all this, you know, because the myth is out there. Y'all come over and get a million dollars and y'all get off the boat. Right. You know what I'm saying? Y'all yeah, tax yeah, exempt on everything. <laughs> you got a hundred thousand in the bank. And then he's telling me, oh, no, brother. And our myth to you is that y'all lazy as hell. That's right. Y'all want to sit around, you know, you rob, you kill this and that. So we start to find out that there is this cultural divide, but it's like mm -hmm. the elephant in the room. We never mm -hmm. really speak about it. Mm -hmm. So. So finally, it's an honor to have you on here and Good to finally thanks. be able to have an African here that I can add. How is the perception? And what do you think we can do to change that? Um, I have to take it personal first and start with 1998 when I arrived. And 
what, what, what I was met with okay. by people that look just like me. Now, I'll say before that, I lived in Indonesia seven years. I went to a school where it was from kindergarten to 12th grade. I was one of maybe seven to ten black people in that school. Mm -hmm. I never felt like I was different. I never felt like there was, I never felt, I felt, I just, you know, yeah. there was never that, that feeling of, oh, man, I'm black and everybody else is Asian. Mm -hmm. There was mm -hmm. never that. I moved to America, Riverdale, Riverdale Middle School, and I was now majority. However, I became the only one. I was the African. Mm. I was the African booty scratcher. Mm. I was the, the one with the weird, uh, uh, with the weird accents. Mm. I was the one that smelled funny. Mm. I was the one that ate funny foods. So that's what I was met with when I got here. And it did at one time caused me to, to, to just back up off of my Africans birthed in America because I was like, oh, word, like, mm -hmm. we're not one. I thought yeah. this was, right. you look first. like me. I'm yeah. looking, children. Yeah. Yeah, I'm and excited. Like, like I said, I'm coming from a school where I'm one of seven to ten, so yeah. I'm in a majority school where everybody looks like me. I'm excited yeah. coming to school like, yo, yeah. it's about to be on and popping. Right. Wrong. So that was my experience coming here um, to begin with. And then, um, I was blessed to watch La Amistad at 17, mm. and I understood. Okay. I mean, <laughs> when I say I understood, a sister cried for like three weeks yeah. straight, just because yeah. it was just, my mind was blown after going through everything I had went through, middle school, high school, getting kicked out of high school because I was trying to get jumped by the girls, mm -hmm. because it was, just, it was, yeah. it was crazy. Yeah. Um, so then to watch La Amistad and come to that realization, like it, it, it put another person inside of me, and, and I was, I'm able to understand where these stereotypes derived from mm -hmm. for Africans in Africa right. and Africans in America. And like you said, Africans in Africa taught, are, are said that they have this superior complex and mm -hmm. this feeling like I'm better than you or they just come here and they're able to bam, bam, bam. But it's like you have to think about it like this, and I'm going to explain the other side as well. You have to think about it like this, right? It's pride. And there's mm. nothing wrong with pride. Right, right. Pride in yourself. Mm. Pride in your country. Mm. Pride in, your, in, in the fact that you know, when, you know, and it's easily seen, and you know, just we talking raw, it's easily mm. seen when you sit one person who knows who they are in the midst of a bunch of people yeah. that don't know. Yeah, that's real. You can see it yeah. easily. Um, mm. So that, like you said, creates that animosity, mm. unwarranted animosity, because mm. the person, you know, nine times, out of, and I speak for myself, because mm. I speak for myself, because that's what I've witnessed. Mm. And I won't even say nine times out of ten, ten times ten out of ten, yeah. I'm not even thinking about that. Yeah. I'm just feeling good in myself. Well, you Happy. know, we've been taught that. Right. That, 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 and I'm to go back a little bit what you were saying to children, we've been taught that disdain for Africa mm -hmm. over here. You know, the closest, when I was coming up, the closest Africa we saw were like in Tarzan movies. Mm -hmm. Right. And all the brothers had living room furniture on their head. Right. So I never, you know, we never had, at that particular time, saw very empowering African mm -hmm. images. So when you talk about the pride thing, mm -hmm. it was us as Africans in America really didn't have a pride in being African right. at that particular time. So an African coming in, you're right. When you're the nigger, when you're the bottom of the rung, mm -hmm. it's quick to pick somebody and, and pick if they're going to be the outcast. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's real heavy. But one of the things is I want to know, so how has your perception changed? Because like I said, from mm -hmm. what I know of you and when I've seen you, you know, you've always been, I was shocked to hear that you were from Nigeria. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> a lot of people like, didn't believe it until they knew I was That's deported. From Detroit. <laughs> right. <Stop playing. laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. A lot of people didn't believe it until they saw the deportation. They're like, yo, like, you were not lying all these yeah. 16 years. No, like, real. no, so. like, I'm literally from there. However, my perception has changed. Um, wait, before I get there, right? And then the other part where um, um, how the African in Africa sees the African in America is because you are in this land full of nothing but opportunity. So many laws that's just geared towards human rights and right. so many things that you can do. You can, I mean, it's, 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 I can't even be, from the simplest things that is taken for granted here. In other countries, you get your head chopped off in a heartbeat. Hmm. You know, you, you, you'll be disowned by your family in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 and so being that, other countries are seeing all of this opportunity here and seeing that you can come here and you can make something of yourself like that. I mean, come on now. Mm -hmm. YouTube mm -hmm. sensations, viral. Yeah. It's yeah. like that. Yeah. You multi-million yeah. dollar empires like built in 2.5 seconds. Yeah. Okay. 
involved in that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the, the 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 hub of that is this West is is America. Mm -hmm. So being that there is that much opportunity, and they come here, and the image that they see still of the black man, the average black man, is in the hood. Is is him getting locked up? Is him beating on his woman? Is him is is him um 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 you know just just not respecting his children? When you when they see that, it it, it costs you it know. Goes, but it's sad. Yeah. yeah. It, it, but but we got to understand you know. What you about to say? Oh, no, no, go no. Ahead. But go we got to understand that it sells. Mm -hmm. You know, what we're, we're looking at, it's a propaganda piece. That that particular uh, brand of music, our culture, it sells. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That the so-called movie, the exploitative movies, or whatever they call them, it sells. It's now, and I think what is one of the things is, is because we've lost the spokesman for it. We look at what the movies we have now are not a lot of different from movies they had back then. Mm -hmm. It's just we had spokesmen for what was going on. We knew then that the music and the movies were imitations of life. They were out, they were outcries, you know what I'm saying? And now, since they're leading the way, we see our youth emulating them. And that message gets worldwide, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I was watching in Africa, I talked to a brother from Cleveland, and he was telling me he went to Africa for the first time. He said he got robbed. He, he, all through mm -hmm. Cleveland, he said, I walked through the hood, mm -hmm. I never been robbed until I went to Africa. And they, but they told him, my father, like my father told him, you got robbed because you was dressed more African than the damn Africans. <laughs> he said, it's true. He went you over there, he saw the baseball caps. Yeah. He saw That's real right. Western influence, you That's know what I'm saying? Right. So he said, he stepped off with Kente cloth and he's wrapped up and covered up and this and that. And they looking at so they picked Money. him short. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. picked him real short. So I think that one of the things that goes back to what the sister's saying is how our image is out there is controlling, uh, controlling our image. Mm -hmm. But how do we, how do we, what my question is going into that is, what are some steps to bridge that divide? Because what ends up happening is maybe from what you've experienced and so on, the so the immigrant community, our African brothers and sisters, and our brothers and sisters from the Caribbean and all over, start to form enclaves of their own community, mm -hmm. and it kind of leaves us out of that. How do we break down those doors to really start to share and uh, support one another? You wouldn't believe how easy it is. Say hi. Mm -hmm. What's your name? What, where are you from? Mm -hmm. How do you say thank you in your language? That's one of my, my things that I use. Why I can always go to gas stations and get, you know, if I don't have enough money, like let me bring it back to you tomorrow. You know, mm -hmm. usually in the hood, they're like, no, yeah. no. Mm -hmm. I get that nine times out of ten because I'll come in. Hi, how are you? What's your name? You know, where mm -hmm. are you from? How do you say thank you in your language? Because I want to greet you in your yeah. language. How do you say hi? You know, things like that. that that's what you call bridging gap languages. Mm -hmm. You know, music, you know. Oh, you're from such and such. You go home. You might listen to some music from there. Mm -hmm. You come back the next day like, yo, have you heard such yeah. and such? Mm -hmm. By the time you, it's all said and done, you at his house having dinner with his family. He inviting you to his mm. home country, mm. you know what I'm saying? But unless unless that high is not made, like, because they're mm. not going to do it because they're scared. Mm -hmm. And then y'all not going to do it because y'all scared. Mm -hmm. So I guess this is where I come in, to sit in the middle of that and say, yeah, you can say hi, and you can say hi. You won't nobody rob each other. So it's just respect mm. for each other's culture, yeah. you know? Sometimes the world needs people who can show that, though, because it ain't easy. It's better said than done out here easier yeah it's yeah. easier said than done but it's, it's, it, it, it really isn't it's, it really isn't you'll be surprised anybody will be worn down with a smile mm -hmm. or well, built up well I mean, i'm glad we bring uh, coalitions because like i said i brought up Armadou Diallo, uh, earlier um because i think it's important to have coalitions because mm -hmm. all the police gonna see is a black man. exactly you exactly know what I'm and the lack of coal like. coalition we, uh, the lack of coalition led to, I don't think, really is one of the things that we couldn't get a, a big uproar. That's when all the barriers should come down. That's right. You know what I'm saying? When we're talking about some impression, uh, oppression, right. you know, we all have to come together. All the barriers right. have to come down. Because it sounds like, Yatunde, that, um, you know, most of the Africans come over here, you know, they're still part of the 99%. What I mean by 99% is that I don't know if you're aware that you know, uh, you have a neighboring country called the Congo, mm -hmm. and all the resources come out of there. Mm -hmm. So why can't the government of Nigeria get it together and maybe produce trade where they can make their own business? Why they get the they too on? busy trying to go hang with Beyonce? <laughs> I'm saying okay. they too busy trying to hang with Jay Z and them. You know they're not worried about their country's greed. 
going on like everywhere right now. It's not just here. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah, like I, I said it earlier, it's like all of the resources that are being used here that are creating these opportunities here are coming from there. Mm -hmm. But when we come here to try to use it here, they're like, no. Nah. So basically, it's for people like us that are aware of these things to go home and create the manufacturing companies that manufacture mm -hmm. whatever it is, the, the, the resources, the natural resources coming out of Africa. Because I know uh, Shell is over there in Nigeria. Come Some on of now. You guys oil, right? Of course. So wait a minute, you guys are coming over here, <laughs> and y'all got the honey over there in Africa. Mm -hmm. The oil. It's that mental game, yo. Mm -hmm. Colonization. You mm -hmm. want to be like your oppressor. Mm -hmm. Wow. You okay. know, the African birthed in America is is he is he is um, enslaved in a land not of his own, um, mm -hmm. taught a language that's not his, fed food that does not come from you know the soil that that that's running through his his body, his mm -hmm. spirit, and the African in Africa is like, <laughs> yeah, you here, but you can't touch none of this. Yeah. Mm. This none of this is yours. Yeah, you can help me harvest it, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna make sure. I, because you don't know what you're doing. Right. You need me to make sure it reaches where it needs to right. go. Right. So that's mm. neocolonialism. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And right. then they put, you know, like you said, put the mountains in charge. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's 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 basically about that awareness. That's all. Drawing awareness to the issue, getting the getting the the resources over there, and knowing why. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Knowing why it's important to invest mm -hmm. in in the Africa mm -hmm. and the things and how it benefits us. Going back to the immigration, so what in in situations like that, what can we do right. to start? Which is the major question. What can we do? I mean, we're bringing awareness to it. But what would be the first step? Do we shoot? Do, shoot? do we pick it? Do we throw rocks? Scream mm -hmm. and holler? I know? mean, that's you know rallies and and and. Um organization mm -hmm. you know between people it, it always helps because it brings awareness and you know in, in America if you if people are aware of you then mm -hmm. you have a more you have a, a higher ground to stand on and, mm -hmm. and say what it is that you need to say and more people will hear you mm -hmm. but if you're standing on your own talking about I'm getting deported right. help me I'm getting deported yeah. help me and nobody yeah. knows you then it's like yeah. Talking on deaf ears. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Ain't no right. ears. Nobody's yeah. even there. Right. There are no ears in the immediate. So you know, it's just about being able to rally around that person. Yeah. And I'm glad that you brought that up because um, pretty soon we're going to have a candidate who's running for governor of Georgia mm -hmm. real soon. So uh, my question would be, because you, my, my question to you, you tuned in, how, how important is voting and getting in the political process? Because, you know, a lot of... Of our people don't really believe. Dun, dun, stuff, dun. So. Okay, let's, let's see. <laughs> I don't think I do either. Um, because I feel as though at the end of the day, this is not your country, yo. How you gonna one day just wake think you're gonna wake up in the country that wait seeks your hey now, that man. seeks your 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 absolute demise is gonna yeah. one day wake up and be like, you know what? If you do such and such, I'll let you have that. Why yeah. not? Nah. Wait a minute, we gave y'all black president. Gave yeah. y'all kind of like rice, cold yeah. and fire, gave you all kind of niggers up in the government. What are you talking about there? Right? Well, that's beautiful. That's you know? right. I think, <laughs> that's, I'm, I'm going to tell you, man, you, I mean, you know the this, this, this stance that I take. I definitely agree uh, with you, Tunde, as if we look for, as black people, if we look for voting or participating full, 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 fully in the uh, political system and think that reform is going to be the answer for black people in the United States, I think that we're foolish. I think wait, that. Whoa, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that oh, you really? should just come see me in Nigeria in two years tops is what I'm giving everybody. Just come on back you there and let's rebuild what is ours. Yeah. How's about that? Let's yeah. do that, you know? Let's go fix oh, that. Sound like a plan. <laughs> My only concern is, like you said, the, the puppet government. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, what kind of, you know, I don't want right, to. Right, because I ain't trying to be locked up. Remember what, we, what, what, what I was saying about oh, when man. people rally around and everybody is, uh, is, is helping one mm -hmm. person or, or even that person that's going to speak for the whole, that spirit that's going to, that's going to, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Shake, shake the world. Yes, yeah, you that's know, we, you rally around mm -hmm. that. Like, we have to get this, this whole separatism thing out of our minds, be able to come together and make a solid plan and and i know it sounds you know what i'm saying it, it looks it, like it, you have found your call i mean one of your many causes you have to champion that cause really i, I, I definitely am gonna do that so, yeah. i'm gonna yeah you have definitely to be the ambassador you know what i'm right, saying absolutely. that's it's part it's part of that thing when you talk about you know an african for me as an african birthed in africa my name speaks only of my my destiny mm -hmm. and what it is that i'm supposed to do so Share that that, <laughs> that was given Please to do. me from birth um I am Yetunde Olatokumbo, Moron Keji, Shalewa Orungbemi. 
And basically, I am the mother who returns, who brings joy from overseas. Mm -hmm. I am one that they have, um, that I am one that intertwines to heaven has favor upon me. And um, I gather and search out houses. So that's, that's what a sister's supposed to do. So I'm going to take my people, the ones that want to go, and go fix Africa right back with me. That's why I was saying earlier, I don't have the money to take home, but I have the people, the people right. to take home mm -hmm. with me. And that's greater than any amount of money that anybody mm -hmm. could give me to say, oh, stay. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good on staying. After the deportation was read, I was, I was content. 16 years here is long enough for me mm -hmm. to have built a, a bridge between my Africans right. and African, my Africans in America. Yeah. I can go home and, and finish that bridge, so. Mm -hmm. Well, some of the, I guess some of the uh, immediate challenges that anybody faced in the country, and you mentioned human rights earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Nigeria, democratic, I mean, uh, it, democratic process when people can use dictatorship what kind of government are we got me at? oh oh that's mm -hmm. why i haven't been there in 16 years 23 years 23 years mm -hmm. okay okay 23 years so what's the uh get on the more personal what's the what's the emotion behind it are you excited <laughs> are you a little apprehensive all of it what's of it? course it's been 23 years and it's home you know i'm mm -hmm. i'm it, it happened all of a sudden. I wasn't looking at deportation, and it, it right. happened all of a sudden. So it's me having to get my mind ready for it in three months mm -hmm. after being away for 23 years. Right. So I'm happy. I haven't seen my daddy in 16 years. That's mm -hmm. going to be, right. Lord knows, well, you know, his sister's not going to be able to hold it together. But um, I've been here. You know, I've been on the other side of the world, living a whole nother life, mm -hmm. growing up in a whole nother environment with different kind of rights and different kind of things that I, that I was capable of doing and able, of, able to do and different ways that I can walk around and, you know, mm -hmm. just everything is different. Being able to just cut the light on and, yeah. and it stays on all day, mm -hmm. all night long until I cut it off. Yeah. In Nigeria, that's not the case. I might cut it on and, oh, okay. It's, mm. the, you know, the, 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 um, the, the lights are not working right now. So if right. a person is blessed enough to have a generator, then you'll go cut that on and, you know, you'll have lights. But it's just different life. So I'm excited. Yeah, you know you're going to be like you said. It is a long, long time. time. Like, why, why are they so concerned with it now, though? Um, the pro I, was, I was in the process um, to fixing everything. Mm. And it just, is it, is it right? Just Okay. Go, okay. I was in a process to um to getting everything fixed. Um, however, like I said, abruptly it just it fell apart, mm -hmm. and the only other thing that the judge could do because it fell apart was to deport me. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any form of relief, so and had to go. And by you being here long as you have been, there's no other way around it. No, um, because I had an overstayed visa. Um, for 13 years, I refused to. You know, what a lot of people do is they come here, they get married, they get their paperwork, mm -hmm. they move on. I refused to do that for 13 years, mm -hmm. um, to get married just for paperwork. Mm -hmm. I was hell bent on, excuse me, I was bent on, I'm going to get married to the person I love, and the only reason we're going to get married on, on, on you know, I, the only reason that it would happen is if I find somebody I love, and we get married, and, you know, then if that's the part of the marriage that comes along with it, then so be it. And so I found myself in that position and like I said it just dissolved and so Understood. deportation was the only other thing that could have happened. Just yeah. damn. Well I was going to ask how does it feel because I know you've been here under several presidents <laughs> that you're now being deported under <laughs> Right. 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 Yo. Right. 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 I don't even think I ever thought about that one. I don't even think I ever thought about that when I, you know, you I don't even know how to feel about that. Now that you're saying that, that hit me like a ton, like a ton mm. of bricks. Right. You know, he's, huh. he, he has the dream act out and I'm okay. a dreamer. Mm. I qualify fully a hundred percent. They have my application sitting there while the judge is deporting me. So they say that if, you know, you, you can't be deported under the dream act. Right. However, I have an application that's pending and the final order of deportation that was served to me. So I don't understand what they mean. You're not able to be deported, I, you know. So is that some we can? I don't know. Some we can. Uh, some you can get. A, is that some you can fight? Get an attorney to fight with or something? Um, I have an attorney, um, Jessica Stern Law Firm. She's absolutely amazing. Okay. Forgive me for the shameless plug, but she's just been no, helping me like no, so no, so no. hard for the past two two and a half years. Um, 
However, it is, you know, the only thing at this point, because I have that final order of deportation and I have a ticket that's already bought for June the 10th, mm -hmm. which I don't know if at this point I would want to. Juneteenth. Repatriation. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> because I have that ticket and the final order of uh, deportation, I don't know if even if they said, you know, we're giving you the dream act so you mm -hmm. can stay. I don't know if I want to stay. I think I'm too excited about seeing my dad oh, now. Okay. To the point where I'm like, yeah, I want to go home, you know. Well, what about dual citizenship? I mean, why not, you know. The thing is, the DREAM Act even is not a pathway to citizenship. Oh. It is just a, More they're, they're going to hold you over, right. They're just oh. going to hold you over for two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll give you a social security number. You can go to school. You can go to work. You can drive. You can, you can rent yourself taxes. an apartment. You can pay taxes. Pay taxes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Uncle right. Sam looking for you. You can right. answer him now, finally. Mm -hmm. Um. So I think, you know, it, that, that's, if it was a thing where, okay, we'll give you the deferred action and that is a path to citizenship or a path to legal permanent residency, then I'll say yes, okay, I'll fight a little bit longer, you know, we can go with that. However, being that it expires after two years and in between those two years, I have to find myself another form of relief. Mm. It's just not, you know, it's not, it's not worth it. So wait a minute, how are you? You're tuned in. Yes, you mean love. you've been here long enough to know the nature of the beast? No, the nature of it. The Sixteen years, isn't that a seven? Perfection. So that means you know all our tricks, you know. Three, three card Monty. I'm gonna take it back home and go teach. Mm. Mm. That was gonna be my next question. How do you think you're gonna be received back home? Do you think you've been over here so long that I swagged and <laughs> kind of, you know what I'm saying? Come you on, now you see the swag, swag all over me. Right. So how do you think that's gonna be received back home? I don't you know. know. You're basically, like, and I have, you, you're an African from Africa, but you've been with us so long. You're, so you're, long, you're, right? You're I'm right. an Afri I, I would seem like an African birthed in America, America right. going home. So in some things, and being that part raising that, some things are just gonna be embedded now. So right, think, and they are, and I'm taking it with me. I, I, I refuse to to shed any part of what I've learned in my 16 years here because then that means that I would not be fully content with who I am mm. and I am fully content with who I am so every single piece of it I'm taking it with me um, however the what gives me what gives me that comfort zone is that I speak my language fluently mm. okay. I cook and eat my food mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying right. fluently mm -hmm. so that those two things I'm, and, and I know you know most of my culture like the, the old school stuff because even Nigeria is like westernized like you said mm -hmm. with the brother that went mm -hmm. with the kente cloth and everything even Nigeria is westernized so you mean that white Jesus what for how long you can see you know you can see they westernized <laughs> But that may be to, you know what, going back with that may be to really to your benefit in a lot of a lot of ways. And I know you made enough plug, we're gonna get you a generator over there. So you know you ain't gotta worry about them lights. Look, I'm Would hoping so. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm working like on I'm, it. Look, we on camera. <laughs> yeah, you just said it. We're you know, we'll raise a, a damn fund if we got to you. You'll be cool. I'm confused. They they having trouble with electricity, but they got oil, you ain't got Come on, yeah, son. man, exploitation. We you know what it is. You it know makes what me it want is. to study the government more now. It makes yeah. you want to go back home yeah. and come fix your land for yeah. real, cause they got they they got us over here buying Jordans. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you could simply last. I think it was like three months ago. I sent my father, my family together. We sent them like two hundred and fifty dollars, mm -hmm. and I mean it wasn't a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But come on now, you know he was able to do more with it there than I could do here, mm -hmm. and actually see what he'd done with it. You know, so I say that to say if you have to consolidate to the point where you're in a room so that a year and a half, two years later, you can be in a mansion mm -hmm. the size of something you never thought you could afford in Back America. Yeah. No, in America. Then do that. But Live yeah. in that room and go to the mansion. Do you think that our, um, that our own setbacks handicap us like Christmas and Thanksgiving, you know, because we, we're the number one consumers. Mm -hmm. And so instead of sending money back to Nigeria to buy a plot of land to plant some food on, you know, we buy some Jordans, mm -hmm. buy the PlayStation 4, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know. Gotta so unlock gotta all of those things right there. So Easy unlocking, just factor. gotta unlock it. it is, it's, it's comfort zones. And I'm just, you know, like I'm saying about the lights, people are dealing with that every day. Mm -hmm. But being that I've been here 16 years, that's one of my main concerns. Mm -hmm. I'm saying like, so I can't just like charge my phone and keep yeah, it charged. Right, like, right, right, right. I'm worried about Wi-Fi, right. you know what I'm saying? And, and, and right. it's the things that have been embedded in me. Like mm -hmm. I'm really, I'm feeling like this, right? When I got here and I immersed myself fully into, I mean, when I say fully into the hood culture, the yeah. sub culture of black 
uh, of, of Africans birthed in America, I immersed myself in there because I didn't want to be different anymore. Mm -hmm. So I went harder than mm -hmm. most people around me. Being able to do that and then come back out and, and say, oh my God, mm -hmm. wow. Like I, can, I, I saw the difference in being raised in, in, in outside of here and being raised inside here. Mm -hmm. So now that I've been here 16 years, I can go home and still see the difference and I'll know how to properly help my Africans coming from America um, transition to Africa in, in you know the easiest mm -hmm. of ways because okay. I'll understand the needs so so this path I'm telling you this path is being carved out and I'm praying that people are yo mm -hmm. it's a wave right now you I'm giving people two years mm -hmm. not because of anything that 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 is personal but because of what I'm feeling okay. I'm giving everybody two years at the least to come visit you know mm -hmm. and after you visit, it's right. It's on you. For, I've done my job. I, so I left it to the as, water. So, are you are you acting as a broker? Are you volunteering to go out and look for plots of land and do the do the legwork for people that may be interested in going to coming to Nigeria? I haven't thought about that yet. My family has land in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get there and see how much land we have and mm -hmm. see how I can build it up. And if it's something that I can build a communal living, if mm -hmm. it's enough to build something like that, then I mean, that's what it's going to be. I'm just going to let people know, look, this is what I got. This is the land. This is how many acres it is. Mm -hmm. This is what it's going to cost to build this on here, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. If you want in, we can all put in on this mm -hmm. and we'll have a place in Nigeria. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. We can buy out and just expand. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's it's empire. Very interesting because I know not only are they real harsh on immigration, but they're real harsh on uh, customs as far as food because mm -hmm. I'm thinking now in my mind, mm -hmm. going back to Nigeria, you know, maybe your dad getting a plot of land and actually um, producing some like real food, mm. you know. And then you can work. come there and eat it. Right, right. So I'm, I'm looking for. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can come there and eat it. Right, right. Because I'm looking at it. It's going to get mm -hmm. to the point because I know Europe and uh, Asia. In India, they're fighting. They're still fighting Monsanto. Mm -hmm. You know, we're the only ones that been bend over and said, "Okay, mm -hmm. you give up." You know, you do but, what you want to do. Right, do what you want to do. So we're looking at the air, the food, and the water that's just totally contaminated. Mm -hmm. So Africa might be that resource where you get some real air, real food. Real water. That's what I'm yeah. saying. But you yeah. know that theory where it's like eat where you live. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to ship it from there to here. But they're shipping it if now. it's good, right? I mean, where, but where it, you, it, where it's, you the I understand from? it's doing, but it's not doing. That's why it's better to eat where you live. That's why people are getting into gardening. Mm, right. They're doing their own food right on their front lawn. It's it's important. It's, it, it keeps the relationship with the individual and, and the land right. that they mm. live on. It keeps it turning. Mm. That's what keeps the, the world to rotate in is when we're in tune with the earth and right. with the energies around us. So, yeah, Africa got good food. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go eat. You know what I'm saying? So, in, in, in a sense over here, one of the things, I know you said you, uh, you know what I'm saying, just submerge yourself in the subculture and the whole black thing. What was it, is one of the things you saw a disconnect with the land? Or how, how far are we disconnected from so-called African customs or traditions? Because I'm going to be honest, one of the things I was watching, I was watching some sisters dance mm -hmm. on oh, yeah. YouTube. And then turned around and, you know, you can Google up in Africa and seen some sisters would have been crushing the sisters I saw that were dancing, and the dancers were almost similar. So is it a matter of us ex uh, distributing African cultures and African ways and another people labeling that as explicit, obscene, and things yeah. of that nature? You know, it's the energy of a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, two people can say the same thing and they come off two totally different ways. Mm -hmm. Right. It's all in the energy of a thing. When you're raised in a hyper-sexualized environment and culture, you know, that's that's what will come mm, out. You know, that's and the message you get from it. That's right. 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 You know, I'm, I'm exactly. dancing to entice somebody. You know, what you, to, eat, to, you know, know exactly. Yeah. I'm dancing yeah. to entice somebody into me, yeah. as opposed to I'm dancing because celebration. Right. Right. Okay. So it's just it's just all in all in the spirit of a thing okay. and how it's being done. So. Okay. But when you say how far, I mean, for me, the greatest thing I feel is, you know, you know, you know a, a, a society by how they treat their women and their children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I dare not even speak on how the women and children are treated in America, you know. 
Need not to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, it's so and it's a problem everywhere yeah. you go. Yeah. And it, and and it's and it's traveling. You know, so these things that we talk about that are problems in America in 2014 is not just America anymore. Mm, this right. is a worldwide thing. And then you have pockets of people that are still in tune with the universe. Pockets of people that are still in tune with themselves mm -hmm. and are still in tune with I need to you me. Mm -hmm. I need to treat you well so I could be so mm -hmm. I could treat myself well. You know, mm -hmm. they say uh, there's this saying: a person who treats you nice but doesn't treat the waiter nice is not a nice person because mm, right. that waiter is serving them mm, at right. the end of the day you know what mm. i'm saying and they they you're, you're they want something from you mm -hmm. so you know it's, it's just that's real yeah. but you know it's like you said spreading worldwide because it isn't an african phenomenon or an african here in america phenomenon the destruction of the black family the black man and woman but it is a product of slavery mm -hmm. colonization but you know the, uh being brought over here uh and the whole culture thing so I think when you see it since we're in this age of fat everything's high pace internet everything is can go global so quickly you start to see that it really is a product of imperialism it really is a product of materialism capitalism mm -hmm. overspending overindulging mm -hmm. to where there's no value in human life anymore our value is weighed by material possessions you know what I'm saying if your stuff if you're not rocking name brand if your stuff is not this and that then you're not worth anything mm -hmm. I think that that goes, and that's what speaks volumes in our community. And so what ends up happening is you start to have this divide from brothers and sisters. I think that we have to go back to slavery. The black man in America has never been encouraged to be a family man. You know what I'm saying? We've never been encouraged to really be there and raise our children, this and that, because we were bucks. We were, taking, we, we were put places to make children and taking other slaves. I think that that's not an excuse. I think that that's a fact that it has to be considered in uh, psychoanalyzing any problems and the same way that brothers have to look at that psychoanalyzer and be willing to break that cycle we have to try to be willing to break that cycle and work with one another for us as Africans here in America my perspective I think we're giving too many outs I look at everybody else they have honor among their ethnicity you look at the Italians divorce is just not an option they have like that you know what I'm saying the Latino man every other people it's just regardless of what they go through, you know what I'm saying? She's married to the mafia. This cat didn't kill a hundred people, you know what I'm saying? And coming home, that ain't even, but her leaving is not an option. And him not taking care of family and support not is not a, an option. Regardless of what side chick he has, it, exactly, whatever. life is taken care, care of. of. So it's, it, there are options. And our community has failed. We fell down and really still maintaining and upholding certain values and, and norms that we had that just wasn't going to be heard of any other way. So we get out of pocket, men and women. We both, you know, just get out of pocket. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is important. Take it back to immigration before we turn to a damn relationship show. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it, it go back to the, uh, like the show we went to. Yeah. When, when, when the Morehouse was it? Yeah. Yeah, you know, the lady spoke on it. You know, we got to live as kings and queens ourselves in order to show the world that we're kings and queens. Or else we'll be caught up in this U.S. governmental mental state forever. You know what I'm saying? That's everybody just the best way says to say that, it. right? I haven't heard. I, I still haven't heard that proper definition. What is a king? What is a queen? I mean, what are these characteristics that come along with it? What is the thought process? How do you treat those around you? What does that look like? You know what I'm saying? What does it feel like? Do you know anybody who? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, that feeling I do. Is, is right. So we all know kings and queens. It, it's to answer your question mm -hmm. briefly. A king or a queen is one who will look after their people lead their people to the water and show them how to drink at the same time sometime if you got to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The king and the queen will respect the people, respect the land that we live on. Mm -hmm. For one, always. Mm -hmm. um, sh any other thing? I mean, anything else I could touch on to help you with that? Yeah. Right, right. I mean, but I a king and a queen, anyone with greatness, a uh, 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 great vision, mm -hmm. and they stick to it with consistency and persistence. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's, that's it. I think I like the point that he touched on about, especially like uh, Brother Bear was saying, touching on taking care of the people. I think that that's the importance of even with men in a relationship with our women and figuring out how to work this thing out. Because when it's all said and done at the end of the day, that they're going to be the first ones to affect and touch the children's lives. Mm -hmm. So the impression we give to our women is going to affect how they rear our sons, mm -hmm. whether it's to be over damn polite or just be where they, you know, have don't even want participation with him. And now he's just thugging it out. So I think that we have to look at that in a long-term effect. And sometimes, you know, it gets difficult. But if we start looking in long-term, prolonged struggle, if we start looking at the, the end game, right. you know, from the long roads, it makes us more patient and more tolerant uh, than we, we've shown before. But I think that it's all really going to come out 
and like you said, embracing that African heritage, mm-hmm. to connecting with back with Africa to figure out because we do have to understand we're Africans here in America, so we've been there's some things that are unique to us. Mm-hmm. But uniting, reattaching that umbilical cord to Africa, oh, yes. you know what I'm saying? Finding out the mm. base ingredient. See, when you know what the base ingredient is, then you know what we need to take out of our diet and what we need to, you know, add to our diet. But first, we have to have that reconnection with Africa. And that's why it's important with these immigration laws and stuff like that to stop them from deporting all our people that are bringing that exposure, that are bringing that right. so that they can keep the American nigger. Negro still in cage in America, blind to international facts and international policies, blind to being touching out to Africa, Brazil, Jamaica, Caribbean, the West Indies, wherever. So it's important that we have to understand that they're sucking out of our African community. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. They're deporting our scholars and our, our ambassadors to Africa. Mm-hmm. So are you saying, Yanga, that they're basically deporting? Brothers and sisters like your tune mm-hmm. to de- decrease our numbers. To decrease to mm-hmm. decrease our numbers and of our course. awareness. Of mm-hmm. course. And our awareness and our ties to Africa. We are a bread, you know, as African as we are, we are a lot of the African in America is a hybrid. We are a lot of, you know, very mixed blood, very right. a lot of you know, I don't like to use those words mongerize and stuff like that, but we're a unique African people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're almost a whole new tribe. Like you got the Nigerians, you got the Somalians, you got the Ethiopians, you have the Africans here in America. Mm-hmm. We're a whole new tribe of Africans. Right. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? And we have to start making our mark within the African family that our brothers and sisters in Africa say, our brothers and sisters, the Africans in America, that's a that's whole tribe. Right. That's, that's a whole right. other nation. So they can say, and we unite and we touch and we make those ties. But so what they're doing is still trying to make us uniquely American. Just right. an American project, an American right. nigga. They still capitalize it. Like she said, we buy the $250 Nikes. We buy the big Cadillacs. We're not sending money to Africa. We're not even connected to the place to that say. we're from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We are from Africa. I mean, mm-hmm. some real stuff, man. I was talking to my chief the other day, and we was and one of the things, the notes I put out, we was watching something about Africa on TV, and I said, you know what's crazy? They snatched us from there. Mm-hmm. Snatched us. So we still got kinfolk in Africa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You still got a bloodline. Mm-hmm. I still got a blood. I got cousins running around Africa. I don't even know. Mm-hmm. Right. Let me tell you something, right? My last name, the way my family got the last name, heaven have favor upon me, mm-hmm. is because one brother was taken on the journey of no return, and the other one was left in Africa. So mm-hmm. the one that was left in Africa was given that last name, Orumbimi. Heaven have favor upon you for not going on the journey of no return. So yeah, hi. Yeah, so <laughs> I came here to come and get right. you, right? That's right. <laughs> you so. know, so that's a misconception too. Just for anybody that's listening, that there are no Africans coming to America to come and get y'all. I'm here. My name is Yetunde, and I'm ready to take you back home. So let's yeah. do this. I'm well, here looking for you. My, and my concern, Yetunde. You yes, know, love. I'm, you know, Bear brought up a good point about you know kings and queens. You know, my thing is. No matter where it is in Africa, my my and, and here too, and even you know I, I even uh, discussed it uh, with Baron Yang about the uh, new Black Panther Party, forms of government, mm. Mm. you know, our own, our own government, mm-hmm. and at the end of the day, you know, my thing is if we can get true form of democracy, which is I call Black nationalism, mm-hmm. implemented, then I think we could make some things happen. Mm. But, Before you, know, you do that, you need some water. Right. You need some water. You know how I feel? I said water has no enemy. Right, right. You need some love shape, shape. before you do any of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. If there is no self-love, you're going to create a whole nother mess mm-hmm. just in another part of the world with different kind of people. Mm-hmm. That's what all of them are missing is, yeah. that, is that basis of love, that unity, the family, the true reason for coming together and wanting to create something.